Hello, everybody, and welcome to Work Against the Grain. My name is Jeff. I'm not going to make a whole lot of excuses on why I haven't posted videos for a while. I appreciate everybody hanging in there with me. You know, life and family and real job takes over. As, as you know, I do this as a hobby and try to take the things that I have learned through my CNC experiences and pass them on to you. So I thought I would take a quick minute and show you a couple really cool things. The first being some quick tips here within Aspire 8. And let's go ahead and create a new file. And 24 by 24, 3 quarters of an inch thick. I've got my XY0 datum position in the lower left corner. Let's work in inches. And right here, see this modeling resolution right here? You have the options of standard high and very high. And I want to show you just a quick tip here. If you click OK, if you hold your shift key down and select your set job dimensions and origin, click on that again, and now you come down to your modeling resolution, you now have higher than your seven times. You now have extremely high resolution and maximum resolution. So when you're doing your 3D models, you can really get a sense of the resolution that it's going to cut. And then you click OK. And so again, hold Shift, click on Set Job Dimensions. And so now if you bring in a, uh, a 3D model into your workpiece, and we'll just go ahead and drag this buffalo in here, and you have a look at the 3D view, the resolution that you're going to get here is much better than just that 7%. And especially if we take a look at the toolpath, and so what we'll do first is let's just put a vector around this, uh, this model. Go to the modeling tab, vector around, fly over here to our toolpath. I'm going to go straight to finishing toolpath. And again, it wants to set the parameters. We've got the gap above the model. I like just putting like a 32nd of an inch gap uh, above the model so it'll machine that away if the board is a little uneven, right? And then the rest below the model. And click OK. And now let's go ahead and select the, the buffalo and the vector and we will then take those and center them into the middle of our workpiece, okay? And hit okay. Now I'm going to use a tapered ball nose, a three degree tip with a sixteenth radius or an eighth inch diameter. It's a tapered ball nose bit. And we're going to go ahead and two things that you could do here. You could select a vector here and do selected vectors or you could just do model boundary and it would it would do the model boundary I like to do an offset uh, when I'm doing my 3d because it starts in the middle works its way outwards and then you don't end up with uh, as many tool marks um, as you would in a raster situation uh, climb so that we get the cleanest and calculate and so because we have it set on such a high resolution, it's going to take this a minute to calculate it. But when you go to preview your toolpath now, you can see that our resolution on our model is really, really nice. And so that's just one little quick hint there of how you can increase your the resolution of the model that you're working on Again, holding your shift key, selecting your set job dimensions, and then you get two additional uh, resolution options here in your modeling resolution. Okay, let's go on now to the second tip. I got um, asked uh, by a couple of folks uh, as it relates to the, uh, the dots. And as you zoom in here, you can see that we've got these dots or this grid here. 
And so if you come in here to your edit and snap options, you get uh, quite a few options here as it relates to snapping. One of those is snap to guides. And as you turn that on and off, I'm sorry, snap to grid. And as you turn that off and on, your dots will appear. And then you can set your grid spacing. I have it set at a quarter, but you could bump that up to a half of an inch. You can set your angle step, your snap distances, job centers and quarters, your nudge distance. I'm going to show you in just a moment. Right now it's set to an eighth of an inch. Um, and so these are some fundamental options that may help you, again, edit snap options. What that nudge is, is if you've got a, a vector or a model or something that you have and it's not quite where you want it, you can hit your right arrow key and every time you hit your right arrow key, it nudges it, in my case, an eighth of an inch. So every nudge is one eighth of an inch. Okay? Then let's say that you've got a box here, and this is real, you know, just I'm using simple geometry to illustrate the points, but let's draw another box. And I want this box right here to be lined up exactly with that box right there, okay? And so I'm going to take this box and I'm going to grab this corner, not this, not your, not your rotating uh, handle, not your sizing handle. But I'm going to grab the, I'm going to have the cursor turn to the square with the crosshairs right on that corner. And then I'm going to drag that until I see that square again in that corner. And now I know that this box and this box are in exactly the same place. And so that's a little hint that can help you line up. Uh, various shapes that you're working with so that you get them on the same XY position. Okay, now let's have a look at some measuring options. So once again, I'll draw a couple of boxes here. And then I'm going to draw another one up here, right? And I want to know what the distance is from the edge of this box to the edge of this box, right? And so when you take this here and you line the cursor up here on the line, you can drag it across, put it on that line, and you get 3.497 inches. What I have found is, is easier for me is to select my dimensions, but right here I want this horizontal dimension. It's a horizontal dimension but the points are offset. So I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to have my cursor turn to that square again so I know I'm right on that corner. I'm going to click it, and I'm going to drag over here so that I go right on that corner. And now I have a perfect alignment of those two squares and what the dimensions are. And you can see that by doing it that way, we get a much more accurate situation than when we try to use this measurement here by going from line to line. Okay? The 3.434 is absolute that corner to that corner. And so when you're utilizing the length dimension and this arrow here, you're not always sure that you're right on the vector. And so you can get some, that one's a little closer, but you can get some varying degrees of difference. And in some cases, that may make a difference. And so uh, once again, just to show you that quick tip again, measurement, you want a horizontal dimension, and you want to know what the distance is between those two boxes there, and you get a perfect dimension every time. The same thing works in the vertical world. If I close that out and I bring this box now, I want to bring it down to here, and I want to know what this dimension is. We can come in here and utilize the vertical dimension, 
and once again take that corner to that corner and once again I get a perfect vertical dimension between those two uh, boxes of 2.521. Okay, another little quick tip. If I want to put text inside of a box, I can select the box and then I come here not to the text tool but the draw text within a box tool and then I can type something in here and click apply and it constrains it from within the box and so if I come over here and I hit enter bring that down a little bit and apply it gets bigger because it has more constraint and if I even go like this and I go like this and I apply it even gets bigger okay and so it's kind of like a word processor right this is your piece of paper and that's where you want your text to be now that's as opposed to when you use your normal text tool and you type uh, something here your text is going to go and I'm just using a generic text here but it's telling us it's going to be left it's going to be two and three quarters inches wide and our anchor is 0x0y zero zero so when I click apply it puts it right here and that text in a box if I wanted it in here see now I've got to shrink it down I've got to position it right and that's a lot harder than just utilizing the text in a box okay as some of you may see down here I have all of my align objects tools here which are the same tools that are here in this align select selected objects but this little check mark show common tools on drawing tab if you click that then you get all of these dialogues you get right here and so for example if I want this box click shift in this box this is my uh, center objects to vectors button I click that and it puts it right in the center now that's different than this one which is center into the material which is here and then if I select them both and I center in material it thinks that both of those are one object so it's gonna find the center of both of those and put that in the center of your material if you select them individually and do center of material then you're going to get this and so anytime that I'm trying to move some stuff around within Vectrec let's say I got a box here and I got a box here and I want this one select it first to go into this one hold shift and select that I first center them together and then while they're selected I center them both into the material and it does exactly what I want it to do okay so there you have some Vectrec quick hints and tips hope you've enjoyed that Again, I'm sorry I haven't made very many videos lately. I'm, I'm working diligently on some stuff now, and hopefully we can get that up in the next couple of uh, days or week or so. I really appreciate everybody sticking in there with me and the new subscribers that we have to the channel. We'll get some new content up here just as fast as we can. Again, I appreciate you watching. This is Work Against the Grain. My name is Jeff.